Uh, prior to this, I was working as a team lead of uh, front-end developer at housing.com. And for a very brief period of time, I was at the gym level. Anybody want to think when you read the um, title of the presentation? A curious case of performance. Anything? Optimization. Optimization. Yes. What do you mean? So performance will tell you about optimization. Right? Why is it a curious case of performance? Anything? Okay, so there can be multiple things when you think of performance, right? Uh, but the, here the intent was uh, just the marketing given, so that they are ready to give me a slice in, at the top. So what what is performance in terms of web? How fast can you load a website and present to the user and make it interactive is all about performance. So you have got metrics and you have got user experience. Let's say your site loads very fast but is not interactive, has janky experience. It's a bad performance. So there's a quantitative and qualitative measure both way. What impacts performance? So there can be a lot of issues, like there can be network problems. Uh, for, uh, so mo mobile has changed a lot of things, right? Uh, there's thermal throttling, uh, passing JavaScript, passing uh, synchronous code, uh, disk I/O, third-party code. These are all the things that impact your performance. So how do we improve that? In 2017, I think there's a lot of measures where you can do this. You can have server-side rendering, minifying, JSF, code splitting, you know, base chunking, cache, uh, cache intelligently, purple, DNS prefetch. How many of you are not aware of these terms? Any of these? Because obviously there's others, there's a lot of ways that you can do it. Tree shaking. So tree shaking is one. Apart from that? PRPF. Okay, you have purple. Apart from that? DNS. Okay, so I'll talk about a few of them. Um, so G shaking is, let's say you've got a bunch of code, uh, but it's not used in your production. It doesn't make sense to push that to production. Right? Uh, so using Webpack or Rollup, you can remove all those unused pieces of code and push only the ones which is relevant for your um, when you have When you link your style sheets and everything, let's say you're serving from multiple CDNs. Uh, you use DNS prefetch, uh, uh, preconnect, and all these header, uh, all these tags and attributes to have that DNS resolving and getting that asset as quick as possible. So let's say I've got multiple CDNs, and to one of the CDNs it got connected very easily, but because the browser will limit, let's say six requests at a time, six or five. DNS prefetch or pre uh, so DNS preconnect will first instantiate that whenever it's free for uh, connecting to the DNS. So there are multiple, you have font lap loading strategies where you have font dis uh, display, you can have your, um, what should be the time between the fonts are visible and other things. So, but there's a problem. The problem is when we develop web apps, we do it on a high-end system on a fiber connection. That's not our user. So how can we understand our user better? So first let's understand what's the problem, what's the loading strategy that the browser follows. So whenever you make a request, let's say to a housing.com in this example, navigation begins. So navigation is the time to first bike. Uh, first paint is when something is visible. First meaningful content is uh, probably is basically when you see a loaded app or something which is more um, intuitive. First meaningful content is the is one of the key metrics that you look for. Is when when something like the hero hero banner or it. So first meaningful paint will be very business driven. Let's say for Google it might be the search results, for housing it might be, might be the properties, for a blogging, for a, a bigger e-commerce site it might be ads or some certain relevance. It, it can differ from product to product. Visually the idea is when you can see something, time to interactive is when it actually becomes interactive for the user responses. Uh, one point which is here and cut is fully loaded is basically the end of the loading uh, like site. But, there's a problem, right? So in this video, we see that the fake that housing.com is loading in three seconds. Is that a real, real user? Probably, probably not, right? So um, I was discussing with this on Alex over the Twitter messages, and this is what he said: TKI is a valuable metric, metric in my view, because it most closely aligns with the end, 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 end to end user experience. I think of all the other metrics as diagnostic aids in understanding the world. So if we look closely, uh, general uh, bandwidth or so 
you cannot talk when we talk about performance performance in terms of performance in terms of let's say iphone 8 or or a very low end device is not reasonable it's not a fair comparison so you go for an average device let's say in this case it's uh, moto g4 running on a uh, let's say 3g connection which is the general trend so here we see it's actually six seconds per housing on for a general user trend even in the last video we saw it was three seconds for fully interactive fully loaded state but for the user, the first time might be seeing it in six seconds, which is very different from what our assumptions are from our metric was. Right? And the repeat is happening, uh, let's say, at four seconds. This is because we have the uh, housing has done a lot of, let's say, uh, performance strategies. They have uh, followed uh, server side rendering, the service workers, the caching. There's a lot of things happening in the background. So into, now what has happened in the last few years, there was a lot of key metrics to look for, which was not easy to do. You had to write a lot of work, unused code, or make a lot of heavy calls and ca calculations at the uh, client end, and then, then get all those data. So the agenda of this talk is to talk about all these APIs that browsers are now, um, they are either under in review, some are in production, some are in the uh, final stages, so the intent is to talk about these and understand how can we understand and diagnose problems from a client browser without writing a lot of code and using the best APIs possible at, at any given instance of time. So the, uh, so the first is the paint timing API. So what is paint? Paint is, uh, I think is the conversion from a DOM tree to pixels. That's what I understand by paint. Uh, so the, when we talk about first paint in one of the previous slides is, is something happening? That's more important. If something is happening, is that meaningful? That's even more important, right? So, perform, uh, so in painting in API, it gives us uh, different ways and mechanisms to understand, to get these metrics from a client side. And we can use uh, this data to push it to our Google Analytics or um, the tracking service that we are using, right? So here, as we see, uh, we do a performance run, get entries by type. I want, so it essentially says I'm interested in the paint attributes of my performance. Please give me those values. So it, so it essentially gives you, it's okay, sorry. Is the code visible? No. Should I talk about it? Yes. If it's not visible, sure. Okay, so um, let's have a little bit of trust. Okay, whatever I'm saying might be true. <laughs> Don't have it in its entirety, I might be wrong. <laughs> so that's when the uh, organization trusts you. <laughs> so here uh, we can see this. Um, so essentially, it says, "Give me all the metrics um, of performance of the type paint." It gives you two. Uh, it gives you the first paint timing and the first contentful uh, paint timing. And it says a duration of zero, um, which is which will always be zero because you cannot start a paint and then end at some point of time later. It will happen at that instant of time. So duration is always zero. And so these are the two. The other way to get it is using performance observer. Uh, a performance observer is a way where you can observe a particular value and use it as a measurement and get it notified later. Right? How many of you have heard about observers before or, or the observer pattern? Third or can anybody tell me what's an observer? Who has heard about this concept? Who knows about it? Let's make it a little interactive. I know it's, it's after lunch. I'm also trying my best. Yeah. yeah, so basically the idea is that you would have an observer and an observable. So something, a value which you observe over and something most basically looks subscribing to this particular observable. So that is the basic idea. So you can have something like, you know, uh, a click event as an observable. Whenever the click is being uh, played, uh, you will get an event and so you are observer which is subscribing to that observable would get notified as a stream, you know, click, click. Sorry, click there. No, no, because the boots have written on. Um, okay, how many of you, I'll come back to that. How many of you did actually get what did we try to set? You did it. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn the tables. Taking the audience. Yeah. So basically, if, if you ever talk about observable in this talk, either uh, Denchot or uh, Ozia will try to explain it. Please go ahead. 
Okay, anybody else who understands of one, please. Now, if this change happens, yeah, sure. If anything changes, no observations are available. So observables are so as Rahul pointed out and Richard pointed out rightly, observables are a lazy, lazy way to get an updated value in some time in future. Right. So what essentially this code does is I write an observer, I tell okay window, this I am trying to write a new observer. Whenever there is a new change in these values, notify me. Not and if I let's say I put this in a head tag and uh, we um, uh, client makes a request and uh, without loading the entire content, the uh, user closes his tab, his or her tab, right? In that case, you will never get a mention. Because the user has closed the, uh, closed the entire window before it, things got loaded. So this way you can use, let's say, in line number 7, you can have something like nav navigator.send be beacon, where you can have a beacon uh, which is sent even after the, which is async, and you can send those values even after the uh, browser was loaded. So this is something that you can do at uh, client's end without, uh, and it will give you much more intrusive data with that. So let's, uh, now let's talk about navigation timing API. How many of us, we do we really know how much time do we spend on navigation, let's say to, um, how much time was spent on DNS lookup? How much time was spent on, let's say, fetching a data on a client, even on a fiber connection? We never have those data with us. Um, I, I, in one of the future slides, I'll talk about it. Let's say we are on a hotspot connection. Hotspot are generally connected as a Wi-Fi, right? And let's say you're on a desktop. You might be serving them a content which is not feasible for their bandwidth. So navigation type, uh, typing API gives you an, uh, there's a, Attribute called window dot performance dot tiny, which gives us bunch of values. Okay, there's a trust. It's working. <laughs> okay. It's not visible. It's a tiny epoch, right? So whenever you make a request, uh, essentially what will happen? Uh, you make a request. Uh, if there's a redirection, redirection will happen. If there's a uh, fetching of an asset, uh, asset that will start. And um, then if there was a redirection, redirection will start. Redirection will end. And all those kind of things will happen. So this window.performance.time will give you uh, gives you all those sorts of values which is relevant for your uh, for your page or web app. The moment you call this, you get all those uh, sets of values like when the when okay. The first is let's say fetch star by this. So I think uh, so the moment you uh, get the uh, call this. We'll give you a bunch of objects which will have a particular value. Let's say when your uh, redirection started, when your redirection ended. Uh, this is important. Let's say I am running a um, let's say I am running a uh, web app on HTTP. Um, which whenever you call that HTTP, there is a redirection always to the HTTPS. Uh, you always end up doing HTTPS, but you, you want to know how many people are connecting to HTTP and why are they doing it? Is there is there a mal malicious uh, intent towards that? So using this metric, you can find out how many people are actually doing it. So you can also do it at the back end as well. But let's say uh, there's a particular user who is genuine, makes a request, but is, is not getting redirected to HTTPS. That's a problem. How, how do you find that? So you, using these values, you can evaluate and get that heuristics. So you can also use these values to cal calculate the total page load time. So let's say uh, two identical systems have very same entities or on a very same connection, but have a different page load time. What's the problem? What was the delta? Why was the delta? Was it because of uh, injection of code by some Chrome extension, some third party extensions or library? So how do you figure out that this metric can uh, help you evaluate that? So you can also find out the difference between the request and the response time. So there's an um, attribute called response time and a request start. Uh, and the delta is how much time did you, um, how much delay was there between the request and response. Similarly, you can use DOM complete and DOM loading to find out the total rendering time of the page. Okay, so as I said, how will you find out if the, um, if our uh, client is connected through a Wi-Fi or a 3G? Why is this important in the first place? Anyone? 
they can serve serve like low low degraded images. So they can serve degraded quality uh, quality of the content. What else? Nothing. Analytics, everything, right? Yeah. So it has a direct impact on your um, uh, user experience. It directly impacts your qualitative experience of the of the product, and that translates to adoption. That translates to your um, <laughs> business, uh, employee happiness, retention, and a lot of other factors. So you can use uh, let's say navigator dot connection, and connection dot type will give you the end, uh, exact type of this. Um, you you. I think the possible values are Wi-Fi, uh, 3G, slow 3G, 2G, slow, 3, uh, slow 2G. I think there's a bunch of values, but uh, in the majority of the situations, it's found generally it's a Wi-Fi, 4G, 3G, slow G, uh, slow 3G, and a 2G. <laughs> Sorry, Ramaji. <laughs> so this is a resource signing API. It essentially talks about our resource strategy. What do you mean by that? Anybody? Anybody guesses? So, so, yeah. so, so why is this important? Why is this important? Okay, first, what does it do and why is this important? CDN या प्रोवाइड है उनका कितना बैंडविड्थ है और वो कितना फास्ट अपने को रिप्लाई दे सकता है उसके ऊपर डिपेंड है या फिर कोई एपीआई कॉल्स कर रहे हैं वो एपीआई कॉल्स का कितना फ्रीक्वेंटली रिस्पांस आ रहा है हम लोग के पास सो इज दिस इंपॉर्टेंट हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू अंडरस्टूड दिस मैटर सपोज आई हैव अ वेबसाइट इन व्हिच आई हैव अ थर्ड पार्टी एडवर्टाइजमेंट समथिंग लाइक दैट सो इफ दे आर नॉट लोडिंग ऑन माय पेज एंड माय पेज इज जस्ट आई कैन सी माय पेज हां सो सो मे यू कैन हैव दैट User experience, right? So, uh, so I will not say you. So, um, okay, when I talk about the first slide, right? Uh, what is performance? Uh, this is a very personal, right? Uh, I'm not uh, quoting anything from Wikipedia or any senior front-end developer or anything. I personally feel I've yet to find the best one-liner explanation of performance um, because it's. I think it's a very multi-dimensional talk. When I was preparing for the talk, I couldn't decide on what to talk about because there can be. Um, so there were very uh, good topics on G in JS2 as well, where people had talked about request and call back, web workers. There's a lot of there's an X number of things that you can do, and which is a direct implication on uh, performance and a UX user experience. So I'm yet to find that one liner. I'm so sorry. Uh, apart from that, yes, um, it will it will uh, help you analyze what's the response time between for different assets across different domains. And it has a direct implication. So if we go through the code, we can see we are trying to um, get all the resources which the uh, web app has requested. Um, then we, in that particular, uh, we are trying to find out the properties and trying to log, log those values. So this is what we get. Anybody who can try to explain what is this? Anybody who can see this? <laughs> You, you cannot see, it's right? It's an image. Uh, it's an image. No, it's a. It's an image resource that you are tracking. Okay. And uh, it gives you pretty detailed information about when the request started and how much time did it take. Fair. So let's say your web app makes ten requests. Can I just request one thing? The lights over here are kind of making it difficult to read your. Screen. I swear, I requested the same. Can you not text me for this? Oh, why don't you just? See the slides are important. Him uh, capturing this on the slides and in between. It's really difficult. Yeah, I, I swear, I also see. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, this is the exact URL that says the name. Um, and what are these? Start time. Headings. I mean, 
milliseconds. Uh, do you find it's too long for a JavaScript? It's a high res time stamp, right? So it's a very high resolution because even in the last uh, decimal, change can matter for a real world performance of an app. So this way you can track and get all those metrics and send it to your uh, analytics server to find out which. Okay, uh, there was one problem that I faced in the past. Uh, so we were trying to build a web, web app and there were several CDNs. But the request was only coming to one CDN. There was some problem in the DevOps or let's say at any point of the strategy. So we were not able to find out what's the problem. In such a situation, if we had something like this, we could have easily found out if all the requests are being sent to the one CDN and the other two are not now. So that could have reduced our page load time there. So that was one implication that I personally felt I could have used. So okay. I'm, I'm looking at all this rich data that is coming up. Sure. But as an individual developer, I have no idea what to compare it to. Huh. Right? Oh. So, Okay. Right. Can so, I export this data and then import it into some kind of page speed tool that tells me, okay, this needs to improve. How do I know what needs to improve? So, okay. Um, I'll, yeah, yeah, you need to. Yeah. Uh, so, I'll, I'll, I'll talk it now. I think that's, that's, the, core, that's the crux of the problem. Right. Okay, what, what is this data and how should we use it? Right, how do you use so, um, as we say, you always set your budget. Mm. Uh, you set your budget for your product page load type. Mm. Uh, let's say you set your budget for your bundle size. So let's say I set a budget, I, my page load time should be less than 5 seconds. And in let's say uh, 5 seconds, I assume that 1.6 seconds will be spent on uh, something, let's say the uh, connection, the transmitting of data, and I've got another 3.4 seconds left. So what should be the bundle size? Right? In that case, if let's say it's a 50 kbps um, connection, kbps connection, it should be around 170 kb of JavaScript library which will be around roughly, um, if let's say 170 kb, 170 kb of JavaScript in a gzip might expand to 800 or 1 mb, right? But that's the initial, that's just the in initial set of comparison factor. In the follow-up runs and the follow-up tries, uh, the metrics can get skewed because your, when caching is in place, your timings and, and things will be a lot different. Uh, there's another use case for this, let's say I want to, um, there's a particular problem in a particular geography of, of the continents. And I'm not able to uh, diagnose, because let's say this, in my 100% of data, there's 20% or 10% of people are facing certain kind of problem. How do you analyze that? In that case, you can run an AB and have all those metrics set up here. Okay, using some of these metrics, especially this one, might impact your performance as well. Um, so you can have, you can do an EB, you can have it run there, get the data, find out, find out what's the problem. And I can throttle the network and the CPU. Yeah, yeah. That way you can do it in your dev tools as well to find out if there's a problem. So there can be issues, right? When you grow as a company, when you scale, different geographies can have different problems. Uh, any questions so far? Anybody who got anything so far? Okay. Nobody. That's it. I can die. <laughs> Anybody, did anyone get anything so far? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, uh, let's talk about the user type in the API. So let's say I've got a custom router, right? A lot of people use, let's say, React router or different kinds of router. Let's say I've got a custom router which uses regex to find out what page to have to render. And with the course of time, everything is good. I find out that there's one particular route which takes a lot of time on navigation, which is not easily done. Or I see that on a particular piece of hardware, a particular section of code is not working fine. How do you do this? Good. So this is how we do it. <laughs> so you create. A, so there's a, there's two methods here. You have a mark and a measure. Uh, so you first you mark that particular piece of time, uh, code or that instance of time, and you measure it in delta to something else. So let's say you want to make a, uh, make a comparison and measure what was the time taken to reach between this part of your web app to this part of your app. Getting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. 
uh, it also understands majority of your DOM uh, APIs. So that's why you can see. So I've got one mark and I've got DOM completed. Uh, DOM complete. It's essentially it understands your DOM events as well. Okay, how many of you did watch CDS from Dev Summit this year? Okay, very few people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Google this year released a lot of data. So because mobile has changed and it has reached different paradigms of development, a lot of things have changed. Um, it has changed um, your understanding um, of the web, what metrics are, have direct implications and everything. And, and it has gone through a lot of series of transitions. So this year, Chrome released a bunch of, uh, uh, so Chrome released a database, uh, a big data uh, on their cloud service called BigQuery. It, what it essentially does is it has a lot of historical data from modern uh, progressive web apps to find out the key metrics that you can use for analyzing. Right? Why is this important for me? As a web app de developer, I can get, get an intuition to something. Uh, as this, so they have put it, uh, if I recall correctly, they have put it, these are, these are just a, uh, hinting, ways to hint you. Don't use this as, as an absolute number because Let's say a, there's a website called CNN, it might, test their traffic, their scale might be very different from some other startup uh, web app. So these numbers might sum to one, but have a very different uh, significance and should be in context to their uh, product. But this should give you a good intent and, uh, and understanding of what your uh, connection looks like or what's your data look like. So anybody, what will it do? Anybody who doesn't know but right likes to try it, uh, take a guess. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Basically, so their big query, you can go to their website and write a sample query. This is a sample query, I guess. So you can write a query. Here they are basically getting the data from 10 uh, October 2017 of the events report, which is this one. And for housing.com, they are getting the data. And yeah, and we are doing some group by Okay, I'll try to take it a uh, step further. So what it essentially does is, okay, what he said to uh, 2017 uh, October is basically the table. That's the table of the uh, project that they have shared. And it has a lot of origins. So the origins are the domain name. Uh, density is the number of, is the density of people or, or, or the users who are getting a particular uh, data, a particular first content full time which is essentially when your uh, loading screen has started up again. It's, it's slightly before the uh, first content full time is essentially when the navigation has started. Uh, it's slightly before the first meaningful pain because by meaningful pain you have already things in place. So this piece of code essentially what it does is it gets all the content or uh, all the first content full time and tells you how many, what's the density of people facing this particular time. I think this should explain it better. So, so it, was that an actual DSL or did you just mock up something? Is this, <coughs> is this something we can use? Yeah, yeah. Um, so where does this come from? I write this in what? Uh, so you go to <coughs> bigquery.cloud.google.com If you want okay, to write... showing me a bigquery. Yeah, it, it's a bigquery. Okay. It's an actual code which I've run. Okay. I've used that data to plot it nicely. Uh -huh. That's the effort that I take. <laughs> And I changed the example of the browsing dot That's that's all. That's all I did. So essentially, what it does is it's getting you all those values and then giving you a data and then I try to plot it to find out what's the percentage of people getting less than let's say this is twenty or let's say two seconds or and getting less than that. Now you see this graph is a little too skewed because we talked about uh, uh, in the first video it was it was almost three seconds, right? Three seconds, right? Yeah, we talked about it was three seconds, but there's a lot of people getting less than that. There's, there's some mismatch. Then we talked about 50 kbps and Moto 4G. Don't you think that this is a little volatile? Or there's some problem. Okay, so let's go a little deeper. Anybody? What's this? So essentially Google has recorded all these historical data and also has maintained what was their network connection. So if we, so this is what I'm trying to analyze for let's say two seconds. Okay. 
we see 58 percent of the people were on a 4G connection, 8.4 were on a 3G connection, and 1.8, almost 2 percent of people were on a slow 2G connection. And uh, that's it. Any questions? So this is a very personal thing. In my humble opinion, I think uh, you should start tracking network related or let's say timing related APIs for sure. <laughs> Anything else is just a heuristic. Um, the performance dot measure and mark was there. It should be taken with the consideration that it might affect your hotel because they're pushing code further. Yeah, it's a case to case. Still inspect, especially the resource timing API. And I think that's there. You have to look into the can use to see if it's a spec or not. Apart from that, when it comes to actual development, um, you should perform resource timing or navigation optimization. I think only when there's a problem, if uh, there's a dire need of something. Because let's say you put all your efforts to find out uh, to get into that metric, but it doesn't result to anything. It doesn't make sense. So if you're let's say building a web app, uh, I think the first intent is to have the at least these kinds of optimizations done. Once these optimizations are done, then go for uh, the other mode because those are those are uh, different aids to understand. Because in, at any point of time, your key metric is key here, and these are just another additional aids that you can get. If you want these slides, you can uh, go to performance.now.sh. So it's already uploaded there. Can you please repeat this? Performance.now.sh. I'll read about it after this. Any other questions? What is the platform of PRPS? Push. Push. Push render. I think, yeah, let's take this offline. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to go through the documentation. Anything else? Uh, so, can we get this part in <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, not related to what you said, I heard that you guys shifted to using Redux observables. Uh, so, I'm not about the pausing anymore. I will not come in front of that. As far as I've heard, yes. <laughs> Yes, sir. I wanted to understand the performance impact of using Redux. Uh, I would like to invite Vivek on stage. <laughs> so Vivek, uh, Aziz, Dirjot, and uh, these guys are working at also, and I think they'll have a direct uh, answer to all this. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Can you? Uh, How's the guys on the table doing? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. What are both developer experience and user experience? And that's when you're rapping and it's not live on YouTube, right? Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Is there any reference link or something that can be used? Um, so, Check majority out. of the content which I find uh, is generally from MDA. Um, then you go read about tweets from Alex Russell, a lot of senior folks in the front end of me, but I think the single point of documentation, if, you, if you're trying to look for, I'll suggest MDA. What's that developer network? That's the one source of a lot of tools. What's the documentation? So, you get better with all the collaboration that is happening, 
So earlier there was a web platform, there was a lot of different sources of information, but now everybody is collaborating and making end to end kind of de facto documentation for the web. And anything else? Okay, how many of you did actually learn something in this talk? At least anything. How many of you know, knew everything from before? <laughs> or, or at least something from before? Something, something. <laughs> <laughs> but if you guys learn something, right? then this solid. <laughs> uh, follow me on Twitter. I go by the handle called Novita. There's nothing else I could get.